Hello! In this episode, we make a spin effect. I almost forgot what the hell this episode was about. Jeez! All right, so a uh, quick rundown of this project. We just have a couple of clips, and so I'm just going to add them quickly to our timeline. Two shots of drone footage. We have one over a snow-covered field, and then it goes to another snow-covered field, but with a sunrise. So we just want these to kind of uh, blend together, and we're gonna do it with a almost like a spin, like the, the shot is spinning. Most transitions are good anywhere from three to 10 frames. For this one, I found that a four frame transition works out pretty well. So this one, we're gonna do four frames, but to build this transition, we actually need to use five frames. So in between where our cut is, we're gonna uh, put our mouse or our playhead and we're gonna use our keyboard left. We're gonna one, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna take this shot, put it up. So it hits the playhead. If it's not hitting the playhead, you have to enable your uh, snapping and that's this little guy here. So we enable snapping. And then we come to the other end and you can get your cut tool. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it. And then once you cut it, you're gonna just grab this side and bring this down. Make sure that they're not both highlights. because if they're both highlight, you'll bring them both down. You don't wanna do that. You only wanna bring down the one. So we'll bring that down. Now we have our two shots layered on top of each other. You can also on this shot, put a quick cut. So this is kind of all together as its own little piece. Then, the top shot we're going to shut off quick and the idea here is that you want one you want one shot to swing over and you want the other one to follow behind it so it's like so that they you know they follow together so what we're going to do is this bottom one which is this shot over here which you know it's starting here and it's continuing for this shot we're going to come up to our inspector we're going to click on the keyframe tool for our position on this guy. Then we're gonna go over four frames with your left and right uh, arrow keys. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to click this keyframe button again to make another keyframe. We're gonna come into our position. For this project, it is a 1080 project. So all I'm gonna put in here is negative 1920. And what that did is it just shifted it over to the side. So if we go backwards, we can see where that went. So it's just pushing it over to the side. Now, so we're at our fourth frame here. We're gonna click on this shot and we can enable it again. And when this shot is highlighted, we're gonna come up here, click our keyframe uh, tool again, and then come over one, two, three, four. And then on this side, we're just gonna put in 1920. So the bottom one, we put negative 1920. The top one, we're gonna put 1920 as a positive. So now it's on the edge over here. And then as we go through the frames, it's following one shot's following the other one. So now if we were to play this, it's not going to look very good because you have a hard edge here and you have no type of motion blur, you know, making it seem like it's spinning. So now we have to add that in. And to do that, we're going to highlight both of them, right click, new compound clip. You can name it whatever you want, then hit create. Come over to our color tab, and this is a good time to tell you, if you had a color grade in mind for both of these shots, let's say it was something completely different, you're going to want to add that color grade before you make them into a compound clip, or before you even start this whole process of cutting them up or anything like that. Because what will happen is, once they're already cut and they're made into a compound clip, if I add any color adjustments onto here, it's going to add the same color adjustments to both shots. And you might not want that. One shot might be a sunny day and the other one might be inside at night. So they're gonna have both have two different color grades added to them. So you're gonna wanna add those color grades before you start this process. So that's just something else to keep in mind. Okay, so now we're going to add in our first effect, which we come up here to OFX. Directional blur, we're gonna drop that down. And then um, 
we're going to move up the strength and we're going to see that the direction goes, you know, in this pattern. And we want it to go left to right because our, our shot is, is sliding from uh, right to left. But uh, so we're going to take our angle here and go to zero. Border type we have to change. And then we're going to uh, take our uh, border strength and bring it down to zero, turn on our corrector and then just wiggle it so it's zero so it makes our first keyframe at zero. Come over one frame and now we see our edge here. So now we wanna move this up to one. So it starts out no nothing, a frame starts to move and then it goes up to one. Then we want to uh, keep hitting our arrow key over till we get to this point and we wanna move this again to one so we add another keyframe and then over one more frame, and now we can bring it back down to zero. Then you're gonna to wanna to save that, and you just come up here, save. Then let's go back over to our shot here, and if we play this, it's, you know, it's pretty quick, but it, you know, it gives you that feel of it being like it's moving, so it gives you that blurry feel, and then, you know, the next frame comes up. If you're struggling with this to play, because you've added the effects. Come down to this little cog wheel. We're gonna go into master settings, scroll down to where it says optimize media and render cache. Under render cache format, you wanna change this to something um, that your computer is going to handle a bit better. If you go down to like uh, DNX HR LB, that's low bit rate, the quality, you're gonna reduce in quality. And that's perfectly fine while you're editing because when you go to export, it's going to use all of the source. It won't use the render cache. So your export will be of high quality, but having your render cache at a lower bit rate, your computer can process things a little quicker if it's being a little sluggish. Um, if you can you know, support one of the higher uh, qualities, I would say do it because it's gonna look a bit better in your preview monitor when you're working on the project. And then to turn on your render cache, you're gonna come up to playback uh, render cache and then you can just put it smart cache and it'll just render uh, Whenever you're not using the resources behind the scenes, it'll render that out So you'll have like a red bar and then as it starts to render it'll turn blue Anytime you do an adjustment though, it's gonna have to re-render that portion of the project Okay, so now that we have our shot here with our effect to make the effect more believable We want to add some sound effects in so Online, I was able to find this uh, bunch of swishes. You can, you'll be able to find if you just Google um, some swishes. So I'm going to use this one particular swish. I'm going to bring it down, and then here's our compound node, and that's where obviously our effect is. We're going to just bring it right in here, and uh, I also just to make this project uh, feel like it's a little more complete. I'm going to bring in a audio track as well to support the the footage but one of the things that you're going to notice is that your your sound effects are probably are probably going to be a little uh loud and you kind of want them just to be in the background to be kind of subtle to help sell the effect not be like a huge uh part of the effect you just want to help sell that effect so i'm just going to click on here and then come up to our inspector having this sound effect highlighted. You can either click right here and move this up and down. I kind of find that a little difficult. I like using this bar here to just drop it down. So we'll just drop it down to something random of let's say eight and sound hear what that sounds like. Perfect. So let's play that full screen and make sure that we like this. The only other thing that I, I might have done is uh, move this audio to make it to make it more a part of the of the edit. So like we have our cuts, you know, playing with the music, but then we can have our sound effect also another little layer in there to help sell that little effect that we have in there. So let's just hear this portion of it again. That helps a little bit. So just a little tip there. Um, overall, I think that that was a pretty cool effect. Uh, just to make sure that if you are going to add those color grades that you know you edit your project and then uh, 
you color those clips and then build this grade out because you'll never be able to color both sides. So if I just went into here quick, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. If I went into this one, let me just, just for time's sake, I just add, you know, a color grade on here. And then on this one, I just add a completely different color grade. So here, yeah, let's go into lab. Uh, something like that. Let's, whatever our color grade is. It'll, you know, it'll be very difficult to get these two shots the same color unless you color them before going through this whole process. So, so that's all I have for you for today. Let me know in the comments what you think about this one. Again, my name's JR and thanks for watching.